welcome back uh, to this uh, part 2, yeah? clip 2 for chapter 6. As I was saying, uh, we could show the same example uh, using Excel yeah? or spreadsheet. So we have this here, okay, like a table. Yeah? We have year in the first row, interest in the second row, deposit in the third row and ending balance yeah? and balance means ending balance in the fourth row yeah okay you can ignore the first part here but this is example 6.1 yeah? from chapter 6 okay so these are the years year one year uh, sorry year zero yeah? this means now year one here means end of year one yeah? year two means end of year two so here zero means end of year zero or now yeah Okay, or beginning of year one, and yeah? you can say that. And yeah? this is the end of year one or beginning of year two, and so on. Yeah? All right. Now the thing that you need to note here is this: yeah? the deposits. Yeah? The deposit you have seven thousand now. Then you have uh, you expect to deposit four thousand per year for the next three years, right? So this is what we have. Yeah. All right. So this is similar to the timeline diagram that we have seen. Yeah, seven thousand now. 4,000 in the first year, 4,000 in the second year, and 4,000 in the third year. Alright, now what we do is we compute this interest here. Yeah? Since you have 7,000 now, at the end of time zero, yeah, you will have the ending balance will be 7,000, which is 7,000 that you have got now. It will be your balance in the account. Yeah? But at the end of this first year, what you will have is that you will earn interest. Now, interest is, as you can see, 8%. Yeah? Remember the interest rate in the example? It was 8%. Yeah? Therefore, you will earn an interest of 8% from this 7,000 balance yeah, that you've got in your account. So, 8% multiplied by 7,000, you have 560. All right? So, that's what you will get. Yeah? It is compounded or included into your account balance at the end of the year. The eight percent interest here yeah, from seven thousand, which is five hundred and sixty, is added at the end of the year. But at the same time, you also deposit four thousand dollars yeah, at the end of year one. Therefore, you earn this five hundred and sixty from this seven thousand yeah, balance in your account. You get an interest of five hundred and sixty. But apart from that, you also deposit four thousand. Therefore, your new balance will be this seven thousand. Your previous balance plus this 560 interest that you earn on that 7,000 for one year, then the 4,000 that you deposit, therefore you have 11,560, yeah, so it is actually this plus this plus this, you get this value, is that clear? Now in the second year, you do the same thing, you get 8% from this new balance, your account balance now for at the end of year one is now 11,560. You earn 8% from this. Therefore, you have 924.80. Yeah? It's 8% from C11. C11 is this, yeah? this cell. Okay, 8%. Yeah? So 924.80. But you add another 4,000. So your balance will become $16,484.80, yeah? which is this plus this plus this, you get this value, yeah? 16,484.80. Then the third year, you earn interest. This is 8%, okay, 8% from D11, yeah? this value here, the ending balance at the end of year two, yeah? because now your uh, balance in the account will be $16,484.80 at the end of year two. You have this available for one year, so you earn interest of 8% from this for one year, you get $1,318.78, yeah? Now, this is the interest, then you plus the deposit that you make at the end of year four, which is 4,000. Therefore, you get total, yeah? This plus this plus this, you get $21,803.58, which is exactly the same answer that we got using the formula. Okay, 21,000, the future value of these cash flows, okay, these cash flows at different times, yeah, at the end of year 3 is $21,803.58, yeah. Now, at the end of year 4, what happens, yeah, we got this answer in the, spec, uh, in 
the slides just now. But this can also be shown in the spreadsheet. Yeah? So in the fourth year, there is no more deposit yeah? because the deposit stops at end of year three. But you will earn interest yeah? because you have got this much there at the end of year three. You will earn 8% interest from this amount. 8% yeah? multiplied by $21,803.58. You get $1,744.58. Twenty-nine cents. So at the end, okay, you add this, you add the interest that you earn. So this will be your new balance, yeah, which is twenty-three thousand five hundred and forty-seven point eight seven. So this can also be shown this way, yeah. So it is easier to do the calculation using the formula that I've shown on slides, but it is useful to remember that underlying that calculation, yeah, this is the working. Okay, so it's quite useful for students to imagine this always. Yeah? So your uh, future value grows okay, because of the interest that you earn. Yeah? That is one source of uh, the uh, amount growing. The other reason is your new deposits that you make. Okay? These new deposits also increase this balance. Yeah? Even if you don't increase the balance here, Okay, there's no more deposit in year 4, but you earn interest from the existing balance. Yeah? So interest increases the value. Okay, so this value uh, in year 4, okay, the amount in year 4 is higher than the amount in year 3. Yeah? So this can be shown. Yeah? So this is a very useful, yeah? uh, what we call, um, illustration to keep in mind, yeah? to understand the future value uh, example. All right, with that, we go back to the slides now. Now, we look at another example. Yeah? This is the second example. Suppose you invest $500 in a mutual fund today and $600 in one year. Yeah? That means at time zero, you put in $500 and after one year, you deposit or you put in, yeah? you invest further, another $600. Now, you are told that if the fund pays 9% annually, how much will you have in two years? Okay, again, we look for the elements yeah, in the time value of money. Okay, here we have the interest rate, R is here, 9%. You have the term, which is two years, okay, because you want to know the term, uh, the value in two years. Therefore, this is the term, two years, or number of period, yeah, or number of times interest is compounded. It's two, yeah, it's, it all means the same thing, yeah. Right, and then the cash flows. Yeah, there's only uh, in chapter five you had only one cash flow, but here you have two cash flows. Yeah? So two means multiple, yeah? multiple cash flows. So the unknown element yeah, will be the future value because this is two years from now. Yeah? So the value two years from now is actually future value. So how do you get this? You take this $500, you stick these separately yeah, because you cannot add these two, 500 plus 600, you cannot add. Yeah. Why? Because this 500 is at time 0, this 600 is at time 1. Yeah. They are not at the same time, therefore you cannot add just simply like that, yeah. not directly. Yeah. Therefore, in order to add, okay, to get the value of these two, you need to add them, but you need to add them uh, later, yeah, you need to bring these two cash flows to the same timeline or, or the same point in time. Therefore, you need to take to future value. Yeah? So here the future value chosen is two years because it's convenient. You want to know the value in two years time. Therefore, you take 500, you, you compound this yeah, over two years to get the value at the end of year two. Okay, so 500 multiplied by 1 plus 9%, the interest rate here, raised to the power of 2. Raised to the power of 2 here means interest is compounded twice. 9% yeah? interest is compounded twice on this principal amount. Alright, then the second cash flow, okay, this you compound again to the second year, end of the second year, but this is already in the first year, and yeah? therefore you compound this for only one year. You compound this $600 at 9% for only one year, once. Yeah? 
So this will bring you, yeah, this is the value of the $600 one year from now, this is the value at two years from now. This is the value 500 now, but when you compound, okay, or when you do this, yeah, this becomes the value of the $500 two years from then, yeah, from time zero, yeah. So because now this is at time two, this is also at time two, therefore you can add the two, yeah. Therefore, you get this value $1,248.05. Alright, yeah. So, <clears throat> okay, yeah. Let's move on. Now, that's the first way, yeah. That's uh, now, sorry, the second question, yeah. How much will you have? Okay, we continue the question. How much will you have in five years if you make no further deposits? Okay, so now the first way would be to uh, take the future value of each cash flow. Yeah, 500, you take, you uh, compound this to the end of the fifth year. Yeah, you compound this five times because this cash flow is at time zero. So you multiply this with 1 plus 9% raised to the power of 5. Yeah, so this becomes the value of this $500 now at the end of year 5. When you do this, yeah. Now this six hundred also you compound to the end of year five, but this six hundred is already at the end of year one, yeah. So you compound this six hundred for four more years, yeah. So you multiply this with one plus nine percent the interest rate raised to the power of four, yeah, because you compound interest only four times on this amount to bring this to uh, the future value at year five. So now, because these two are at the end of year five, you can add them. Yeah, so you get this value: one thousand six hundred and sixteen dollars and twenty-six cents. Yeah, that is the second. That's the first method yeah? to get the future value at year five. Another way would be to use value at year two that we have got previously. Yeah? we got this value: one thousand two hundred and forty-eight dollars and five cents. Now this is the value at the end of year two. Now you compound this three more years to bring this to the fifth year because there's no further deposit. Yeah? So this is considered like a lump sum or a single cash flow, yeah? just like in chapter 5. You multiply, this is the uh, present value, multiply with 1 plus R raised to the power of N. Yeah? <coughs> so therefore, you get this answer, which is exactly the same. Yeah? It must give you the same answer. $1,616.26, yeah? So there are two ways, yeah, to do this, to solve this. One is to compound each cash flow separately to the end of the term. The term is five years. Now this cash flow is at uh, the beginning of the term, yeah, that means now. So you compound this separately, yeah, you do this separately, that's what we mean by separately. To the end of the term, to the end of year five. This is end of year five. This is also end of year five because this cash flow is at end of year one. Yeah, so you compound this four times, so you get the value of this cash flow at the end of the fifth year. This is also the cash flow at the end of the fifth year. So because these two are the same time value, you can add. Okay, you can add. Yeah, otherwise you cannot add. That's the first method. The second method is you sum the future values of the individual cash flows at a given time, like this. Yeah? This is the cash flow, the value of this cash flow at the end of year two. Then you compound. Yeah? You sum the future values of individual cash flows at a given time. This is end of year two. Then you compound this sum to the end of the term, yeah? five years. Because it's already at the end of the second year. You need to compound only three more times. Yeah, interest is compounded three times. Therefore, it's one plus nine percent raised to the power of three. You get this value, which is the same as this. Yeah, no matter which method you use, because the two methods are consistent. They look different, but they should give you the same answer. Yeah, every time if you do it correctly. Yeah. Now, are there only two ways? There are many ways actually. Yeah? Another third way is this. Yeah, we can use the value at year one. Yeah, because the 500 is given and 600 is given. 500 is at the end of year zero, yeah, or uh, uh, now, okay. And this is the cash flow at the end of year one. Yeah? Therefore, 
we can take this 500 to the end value at the end of year one so that we can add this yeah 